Okay, got a great question from our friend Sasha. It's, it's a big puzzle. There are lots of pieces to his puzzle, so I want to shell it out in pieces. The very first thing is that our friend lost both of his parents when he was eight years old. He had two siblings, one was 16 and one was 18. His brother was 18 years old when his parents died. When his parents died, all three of them got an inheritance of over $100,000 each, right? So mind you, he's eight years old. Eight years later, when our friend Sasha was 16, his brother, who at this time must have been in his 30s, borrowed $50,000 of that $100,000 plus that Sasha got as an inheritance, right? Um, and that money went to all sorts of dysfunctional things like paying for partying, um, bills, and just a lifestyle that's just not resourceful to growing stronger that his older brother had adopted. And, and, and granted, my empathy goes out because it's a difficult thing to lose both of your parents at such a young age. Your brother grew dysfunctional and is apparently still down a dysfunction, going down a dysfunctional path based on that trauma or whatever else life has, has offered him. But you, you sent him $50,000, you, you lent him $50,000. And the very first thing I want to address is the energy around, surrounding the money. The money, you gotta understand that money is a, is a manifestation of the service we provide to the world. We, that's why we earn it. You earn money because you give something to get money. The money that you got is sacrificial money. The energy surrounding it is not, I worked hard for this money, it's my parents died and this money fell in my lap. So there's a lot of a negative association with that money. It's, it's very difficult to, to understand this because we like to look at things objectively, right? Like it's, it's just fucking money and your parents died. It's cash, bro. Not so. Subjectively, especially as, as a young child, the experience associated with getting that money is a very difficult one. So you probably have a detachment from this money. For you to give $50,000 to your brother is not only a expression of your love for him, right? It's my brother, you know, he needs the money. But it's also a indication, and, and there are many in indications, but it's just a, it's, it's another indication of the pointing to the detachment that you have from the money, the ill feelings that you probably have about the money, right? Whether or not we, this is conscious is irrelevant. I'm telling you that there are ill feelings about the money because your parents don't die when you're eight years old and you get $100,000 and you feel good about that, okay? So, that money is not really your money. And I think you feel that way as well. So, it's a tool now to help you see some things and help you grow stronger as you learn how to earn your own money because that's going to be important because you've got it you, now you have to have different associations with money otherwise you're going to end up broke or destitute or spending your money on things like your brother is and apparently you're, you're a much more grounded child than your brother was but we've got to resolve that right this money is not your money and it's fine that you gave your brother fifty thousand dollars the thing is that his brother now is a victim of what he's calling attention deficit disorder, right? He's got other problems. He's on drugs and, or whatever the case may be, perhaps. Um, he's got a new job, blah, blah, blah. And, but it's time for him to pay the money back, right? Now that he's got a job. It's $50,000. And our buddy Sasha doesn't want to disrupt the relationship that he has with his brother. Doesn't want to be a burden upon his brother. But he wants his money back, right? So I, I totally get it. His brother's a victim, right? It's like, he's got ADD and he's, he's had a bad life and I, I'm sure you feel this way towards your brother. The energy between your brother is kind of like my poor big brother, he can't get his shit right. He's a victim. And he's embraced that, right? For him to, to embrace a diagnosis of any sort. Anytime we embrace a diagnosis, doesn't mean that you don't have what you've been diagnosed with. I have cancer. Right? Doesn't mean that, you, that there isn't cancer cells in your body. Doesn't mean that the, his attention deficit he doesn't have an, a, a deficit to his attention. It's how do you embrace that? I have ADD. It's mine. I have cancer. Or there's attention deficit happening in my body. There's a cancerous growth in my body. Do you see? And I'm sure your brother is the type, again, this is all just speculation, that embraces the victimhood. 
right? This is going to be his pattern. This is going to be his karma. And he is going to be a drain on you for the rest of your life if you don't deal with him in a resourceful fashion, right? If you enable his victimhood. Oh, but he's got a good job now. Mm -hmm. Right? How old is he? He's probably, I'm sure he's older than me, right? I mean, based on the, the, the math here. What you've got to recognize, and what I'm going to offer you, is that there's a movie. There's a great line in this movie, uh, A Bronx Tale. If anybody's watched this, you know, if you grew up in New York, you definitely watched A Bronx Tale. Uh, where Collegiano, I think is the name of the kid in the movie, is chasing after a kid down the street, right? Collegiano must be like 15, 16, maybe 18 years old. Chasing this kid like, you motherfucker, get back here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. He's running. And then his mentor, Collegiano's mentor, comes up to him and says, hey, stop, what are you doing? What's going on here? You know, this guy's like a big mob boss. He's like, what are you fucking doing here, kid? That motherfucker owes me a thousand bucks or a couple hundred bucks, maybe 500 bucks, whatever it is. He owes me a thousand bucks. And he says, hey, relax, relax. Collegiano, chill out. Let him go, let him go. And he's like, what do you mean let him go, man? And the older, smarter, more grounded, patriarch, mentor says to him, look, that guy's no good. You just paid a thousand bucks to get him out of your life. He won't be around anymore. Think of it that way. Think of it as you just invested in getting that rat bastard out of your life, right? With your brother, right? It's very different than, you know, some rat bastard that owns you money. With your brother, You've bought clarity and understanding on where you are in relation to him. What type of relationship you have. He lost his parents just as you did and he leaned on you, suckled on you, right? He's going to continue suckling on you. And if you're not aware of that, right? I'm not saying kick him out of your life, but if you're not aware of the relationship that you have between the two of you, you will be suckled on for the rest of your life. Not only by him, but it will become a pattern. Your wife will suckle on you. Your friends will suckle on you. You know what you call someone that gets suckled on a lot? A sucker. You don't want to become a sucker and your brother will suck you dry if you're not aware of the situation. So you paid $50,000 as a kid, right? Which wasn't your money to begin with and you felt this way. But you were afforded a, a, a pie, pie of energy and you invested a part of it to Gain clarity on the relationship between you and your brother and that's very, 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 very valuable because if you do not have this clarity about the type of relationship you have between the two of you, like I said, you will end up a sucker in many, 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 many ways. So be grateful for what you purchased. He's not going to pay you back. Okay? I'm not psychic, but I've, I've got a pretty good grasp on human behavior. Right? He's a victim. He just got a job. He owes you $50,000 from several years ago. You're not getting your money back. You invested that money, just like Collegiano did, in order to gain intel as to the type of relationship that you have with him. Right? So that's it. That's done. Now, and he owes you even more money than that. And that's fine. What should you do in this situation? I don't want to affect the relationship with my brother. You have to grow stronger than your brother now. This is what you do next. Right? You already understand the associations with the money. You already understand your relationship with your brother. Let it both go. That money's not yours. Invest it. Get rid of it. When I say invest, even, in, even the investments need to be flittered away. That's not your money. That's, that's blood money. Okay? And this is just what I'm feeling about it. And I could be wrong. But I'm offering you this. That's blood money. Get rid of it the best way you can. Just like you did in order to get rid of the suckling from your brother. Now, clean slate. This is what you need, motherfucker. You need a clean slate to start all over again. And this is great. You don't have blood money in your pockets and you have a perspective. You've gained a perspective on your relationship with your brother. Grow stronger now. What is Elliot Hulse's message always? Grow stronger and through your strength, through the energetic charge of your positive energy, you will inspire him perhaps to grow stronger or someone around him to grow stronger or someone you've never met yet to grow stronger. It is your job now to take those experiences and any other experiences that you've had in your life. You've got a great story. Your parents died. Great story. Right? I might sound objective when I say that, but, but, but stick with me for a minute. 
All of our challenges are also challenges for other people. We go through shit so that we can show other people you can get through shit. So you've been through some shit, embrace that story, use it, it's a tool. Now you're gonna grow stronger. Look, both of my parents died at the age of eight. My brother is a drug addict and look how awesome I am. That is your goal, that's what you do now. You become awesome. Now I don't know what that awesome looks like. You know what that awesome looks like. And I can promise you it's gonna be a long, hard journey of awesomeness becoming the strongest version of yourself. And I'm grateful for your pains and I'm happy for you because you're gonna be a big, strong, super star badass. And you're going to then, in your parents' name, inspire others, perhaps including your brother, to become stronger versions of themselves. That's your mission. Once we've cut ties with the negative energy in our, in our lives, which is a process in and of itself, because we all come in here innocent and the world rapes us. Once you've cut ties with the negative energy, your only objective as a human being living in this day and age in the culture that we live in is to become a stronger version of yourself and inspire others. This is how the human race evolves. You've been offered environmental pressures. If you, if you study Darwin, environmental pressures create what? Sparks of evolution. You're going to evolve in a way that is unique and that can serve a purpose in multiple ways. If you have the right perspective, if you're thinking about this properly, you're telling yourself the right stories. So that's it, my friend. I, I appreciate you sending this question and I'm looking forward to hearing more about your journey of growing stronger and how you support others as you develop. Talk to you next time.